Hello, my name is Tristan Casillas, and I'm currently a junior enrolled at the University of Illinois. And I am Matt Kleinhans, and I'm currently a sophomore at the University of Illinois. And today we're going to be taking you through efficient markets and specifically um, what the January barometer is and how that affects efficient markets. So let's get started. Alright, to, to start off, we're going to cover some of the learning objectives. Um, first off, efficient markets, then capital asset pricing model, methodology that we used, research paper, and our experiment to test the January barometer. So efficient markets, what is an efficient market? Um, as you can see, we put a URL um, at the bottom of the screen, and I'm going to be pulling a couple quotes off that, which I think explain what efficient markets are really well. Mar market efficiency championed in the efficient market hypothesis formulated by Eugene Fama in 1970 suggests that at any given time, prices fully reflect all available information on a particular stock and or market. Fama was awarded the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences jointly with Robert Schiller and Lars Peter Hansen in 2013. According to the EMH, no investor has an advantage in predicting a return on a stock price because no one has access to information not already available to everyone else. So what this really means is because information is released to the public at any point and it's released to the entire public at any point, no one has an advantage because everyone has the same information. Um, if someone did have information that the rest of the public did not have, um, this would be classified as investor trading and that is illegal. So counter argument to efficient markets. Um, what, this, what this really means is uh, people look for anomalies in efficient markets, a way to actually beat the market. Um, and this is what our entire project was focused on. Um, we looked at the January barometer, but the um, quote that I'm going to pull from Investopedia that explains it is as follows. Counter arguments to the EMH state that consistent patterns are present. For, exam for example, the January effect is a pattern that shows higher returns tend to be earned in the first month of the year, and the, we and the weekend effect is in tendency for the stock returns on Monday to be lower than those of the immediately preceding Friday. So again, efficient markets um, is a way that people can trade and that no one can beat the market. And these, this counter argument is anomalies where um, you actually can beat the argument. So we're going to look at a specific anomaly uh, called the January barometer in this project. All right, so next to cover is capital asset pricing model. And at the bottom of the slideshow, you can see a link provided by Mr. Myers. And so what CAPM is, is a model that describes the relationship between risk and expected return and that is used in the pricing of risky securities. So basically what this means is that investors use this pricing model to estimate a return based on the risk. So methodology. Um, first, we're going to look at how we collected data. Um, we looked at the S&P index for the last 50 years and found out um, the percent change of the S&P index in January as compared to the rest of the year. Um, the reason we used 50 years is because in statistics, anything greater than 30 is um, st statistically significant, and we found that 50 just uh, proved to be a good number of years to look back on. Um, so from there, we uh, rated each year as a success or a failure. And if it was a success, that means the January um, percent change in the S&P index was within 5% of the rest of the year. So if, if the changes in percents were within 5%, it was a success. And if they were not, it was a failure. Um, after, after we uh, collected the data and did a little bit of data analytics on it, of the success and negatives, we wanted to, or we were going to show, um, in a more visually appealing way, these success, these successes versus failures, and how we did that was by using a histogram. Um, after using the histogram, uh, we are going to use a matched pair t-test, 
and this is also going to be using a bit of advanced statistics and what this is going to do is show us if the probability of the um, success versus failures is statistically significant. Um, if the probability that the January does um, accurately predict the rest of the year, if that probability is above 5%, we were going to mark this, the January barometer, as being true and statistically significant. And if it was below 5%, we were going to mark it as false and that the January barometer was nothing more than a phenom. Um, the reason we chose 5% was, again, because 5% is um, a number in statistics that if you don't have anything else to go off of, you use 5%, and that makes it statistically significant. All right, so next up, we have the research paper. And we found an article by Glenn Petzengill and Jungshik Her. And the title of the research paper was The January Barometer and the Individual Investor. And me and my partner figured that this would be a good reference point to use in how exactly we would test the January barometer because we didn't have that good of, a, uh, of an idea of what it actually was. And by the end of um, using the same research they did, we actually got similar results. So once we actually ran the experiment using the methodology I previously stated, um, the actual data came out to be uh, that the probability of the January barometer successfully um, predicting what the rest of the year would look like um, based on the S&P index was that it was about 1%. So because that 1% was below the uh, statistically significant number of 5%, we reject the null hypothesis that the January barometer does in fact work and we can now conclude that it is an anomaly and that it should not actually be used in predicting the stock market. Um, so that is the end of our project. Just on a side note, um, we are sorry that we could not get the um, PowerPoint to display throughout the full window. Um, we could not get the software, uh, the recording software, to work with it. But um, thank you. Have a good day.